Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Chen Yu Zheng. I'm from uh, Open Atom, Open Oiler, and uh, my other co speaker is Liu Yanfei from Open Atom Foundation. And uh, if you are here for the uh, last uh, time slot, we have been uh, talking about uh, the S bomb stuff and open chain stuff from like the policy, government policy view and uh, some general information. And in this session, actually, I would like to share some uh, practical stuff about what uh, our community have been done with the uh, S bomb or compliance stuff. I hope and hope that would be useful for you guys. And first, uh, first of all, uh, what uh, who we are? Uh, uh, I, I I think most of you might not uh, familiar with uh, Open Euler or Open Atom. Uh, actually, Open Euler is an uh, operating system, open source operating systems, and uh, uh, the feature, uh, the main feature of our operating systems is that uh, we can like uh, suitable for uh, any server, cloud compute, uh, edge computing, and embedded scenarios, which is uh, very useful. And we also support a different kind of uh, hardware architectures. Uh, for instance, uh, for example, like x86, ARM, RISC V, Power, and all the other stuff. Uh, actually, we uh, not only have very good support for x86 and ARM. Actually, uh, some of our vendors already gen uh, already manufactured RISC-V-based uh, uh, laptop, which is uh, quite uh, quite uh, new features. And for more in information, you can check for the, our website. So, uh, as we are uh, operating system community, so uh, I think we have some uh, particular challenges uh, f uh, when, com uh, when doing the compliance uh, comparing to uh, general software. Uh, this is from our point of view, so uh, it might be not uh, very correct, uh, but uh, it's our practical, practical uh, like uh, uh, practical uh, problems that we are facing. For example, uh, uh, for the general software, people are focused on their own codes and like what uh, software you, you imported. Uh, but for the operating system, uh, you are actually focused on the integration of different software packages. That's uh, the, so the scope is kind of different. And uh, for general software, you uh, sometimes, uh, for the most cases, you only care about your own software. But for operating systems, uh, we care a, a large number of softwares. Uh, for instance, uh, for the normal release, we uh, the community uh, quality provided quality uh, software package number is over uh, for 40, uh, 48,000, so which is very large. And those 40, 48,000 uh, packages have uh, their uh, imports and uh, dependencies, which creates a very big, very huge number of softwares that you might have to uh, consider. And for uh, so the general software, because it's a single software, so the tech stack uh, is uh, is uh, just one. But for operating systems, uh, you have to care multi tech stack, uh, which uh, you have to also do take consider. And uh, for the general software, you uh, you always own everything. Like the code is yours, the license is yours, uh, uh, everything is yours. But for operating systems. Uh, because we are integrating uh, all the different software packages, so uh, the best idea is to keep everything as is. So you, you cannot change uh, anything about the software itself. So uh, that's also another challenge. And the biggest challenge uh, we have to face is that the life cycle for general software is quite simple. Like. Uh, you 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 only have to maintain uh, for most of time. You only have to maintain few uh, versions. Like your user might have to upgrade to the latest version uh, every time you release, because uh, that's how uh, 
open source uh, general software uh, does, but for open operating systems, uh, people are using the stable uh, or LTS version. So you have to maintain different uh, LTS version uh, for a very long time. And especially like uh, other uh, operating systems, sometimes it's four years, sometimes it's six years, sometimes it's uh, 10 years. So that's uh, very long comparing to uh, general software. So that uh, makes uh, our challenges for uh, make compliance about uh, our operating system, open source operating systems. So for uh, what we have done, we have done in two levels. Uh, currently, we have done it in two levels. The first one is license compliance. Uh, as we can, uh, as we can see, that uh, Open Euler community has a very large number of uh, com contributors, uh, members, and uh, users. So, uh, and we have imported a, a large number of uh, software packages. So for uh, the license compliance, uh, we have built first. We have built the uh, a very strong uh, infrastructure to check, uh, provide IT, uh, IT stuff for the whole community to uh, apply license compliance. Uh, like we have the uh, license uh, database connected, we have the SPDX license database connected, and we also have OSS info gathered. Uh, all of that provides the solid uh, information uh, infrastructure, and then we have been built our own open source software license compliance guide. Uh, be uh, with these two guides uh, and the infrastructure, we can provide a solid foundation for for our uh, license compliance. And we also generate uh, different uh, rules in different uh, stages uh, for the whole uh, for the whole uh, uh, license compliance uh, for the whole uh, system, operating system build uh, uh, build build uh, uh, pipeline, yeah. Uh, uh, for example, uh, before we introduce uh, a software to our operating system, uh, we have to pr uh, pr uh, we have to do introduction analysis, and after that, we will do the component analysis. And uh, for for that, so we, we also different analysis and checks, and some of them are already done in our IT system, but some of them are still uh, working. Uh, and this is not the latest slide, so uh, some of them are in the red uh, box have already, also have already turned green. So that's uh, the overall uh, framework for our open, uh, compliance solution. And so what are the uh, outcomes? The outcome is that Open Euler community is now uh, uh, have now uh, mapped the ISO 5230 to our community, and we have successfully got our uh, certificate for the license compliance, uh, which is ISO uh, 5230. Uh, it's also the first open source community to get uh, this. So that's why uh, we think we did a very good job in uh, practical uh, license compliance uh, assurance. So here are some uh, technical details about uh, SBOM we implied uh, in our community. Uh, we have two principles. One, the first one is that one package, one BOM, uh, one release corresponds to one SBOM. And uh, so that's the, uh, the, the, the model in the left is the model. And here is our uh, practical, practical example. Uh, the second one is uh, each software package in the release corresponds to a single SBOM entry. So that's why, that's how we keep our uh, SBOM generation correct. Uh, here are some uh, uh, graph uh, snapshots of our IT system that we used. Uh, for example, uh, for this Hive uh, uh, 3.5, uh, 
we have uh, Open Euler 22.03 uh, LTS release, and we we have Hive uh, 3.1.2 in that. Uh, uh, operating system version. So we can see that in this uh, software, it includes 36 components, uh, 217 dependencies and uh, 17 runtime dependencies. Uh, we can have a very clear uh, dependency graph uh, from our uh, from our IT system. And this is only one of the uh, 6,000 packages that we uh, provide a very uh, solid uh, uh, quality assurance. And another thing is that uh, also from that IT system, uh, we can uh, have a look at uh, uh, who is uh, it's a reverse dependency tracing for a single piece of the software. We can uh, easily see uh, who is the entire product dependency of me, uh, which also provides a very good uh, example for this log4j uh, uh, software dependency. So that's our best practice about the IT system, and you can see that uh, we have also the overview system shows that uh, our uh, what's our whole system looks like, and uh, uh, here is our like what the IT system can do in different uh, release uh, different uh, stage uh, in of our uh, of our pipeline. The first one, uh, is, as I mentioned, we have to introduce uh, introduce our one package uh, or one software to the operating systems, uh, which is, uh, is the introduction stage. It, we will provide a certain of che checks, and in the development uh, phase, we also will check uh, for every uh, pull request. And in the release uh, side, we will check again uh, for all the packages that in our release we uh, follow the rules, and then uh, after we release and deploy, deploy it, we still check for uh, the compliance stuff, which assures uh, the, the, our software uh, obey uh, the compliance software license compliance. And another thing we have done is the su su supply chain security. Uh, which is also very important. And uh, in this way, these are two uh, very easy examples that we have uh, happened uh, in recently is the XZ, UTILS, and Log4J uh, voluntarily. Uh, so uh, here's our challenges, and here's how, what we, we have done to try to uh, solve it. Uh, like most of the uh, over open source community, software community, we have our security committee in our uh, in our com community. So, uh, our security committee uh, security committee uh, is in charge of our security assurance uh, stuff, and we have uh, built our security assurance policy. Uh, with that policy, we can provide uh, security in different uh, steps. For, uh, for instance, uh, package source security, the coding security, the build security, the release security, and our infrastructure is also security. So this different level of security uh, provides a very solid uh, foundation for our uh, open source software. So how is our uh, security community forms. Uh, actually, uh, as mentioned, we have different levels. So in the security community, we have a specialist from those different levels, which are, um, all of them are very, uh, very experienced specialists in that particular area. And here is our like structure of our uh, uh, security organization uh, of this community. First of all, the, on the bottom line, again, is the infrastructure. We have tried to make our infrastructure very safe uh, using uh, every aspect we can get uh, from our like vendors. And we, uh, we have used some of the open source technologies, but we also have purchased uh, some of the uh, very uh, competitive uh, uh, commercial release, commercial versions for the security scanning or stuff like that. And then uh, again, we have uh, 
generate, uh, we have uh, tried to many, manage uh, all the security from our, our development lifecycle, uh, like for the package source security and for development, the coding security, and in the build stage, again, the build security, and then the release security. That's how we keep our system, whole system and software uh, to be secure. So, uh, that, and then for the latest, uh, for the latest, uh, uh, for the latest uh, news is that we are now trying to build a SBOM based uh, CVE management system. And that's what we are trying to, trying to do now. And we are uh, looking forward to have it done by the end of this year. And uh, that's how we connected uh, our CVE analysis and handling together with uh, the SBOM stuff. And for example, we have the CICD pipeline and we have all the materials and uh, we have used SBOM to this whole system uh, to make it more safety. So uh, besides of all the IT stuff and uh, uh, pipeline stuff and the rule stuff, we actually have the more important stuff we, we are facing uh, we, or we have learned is that people are, the person who writes the codes are still very important in the whole like uh, uh, consistency and uh, uh, and the security stuff. So we have managed to uh, provide learning materials and uh, uh, lectures and stuff to uh, make our, to raise the awareness of all, all the contributors in the community to like, to know how to write secure codes and how to use those tools to generate secure codes. So we are, uh, uh, providing like 20 lectures to all the community to let them know how to use it. And we have uh, provided exams and certifications in the community to like uh, uh, check whether the key, first, first to check the key uh, contributors uh, like the release manager, QA stuff and security stuff knows everything and then we uh, broaden the border to uh, all the com contributors in the community to learn how to use it. So that's why we think the contributor or the person is still the most important. And so what's the result? The result is that uh, we have also passed the ISO 189974 uh, 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 Conformance test uh, with the open chain. So here is Open Euler, which is also the only one uh, open source community in that list. So that's why we think uh, our story is a very good uh, practical story for uh, make uh, an open source uh, open source operating system uh, compliance. So uh, that's all for my content, and uh, we are actually Open Euler is uh, one of the top sponsors uh, for this event, and we have a booth at D2. So feel free to uh, drop by and learn more about Open Euler. We have prepared a lot of uh, uh, very good demos and uh, stuff there, so uh, feel free to check out. Thank you. <laughs>